We'll see how this goes. Oh, nice. Polygon's pusher. What's up, man? Reddington. Hi. Okay. Simon, we're actually uh, going to critique your stuff right now. Tim Mod, what's up, dude? Jordan, how you doing? Mr. J3D. Okay. What's up? Look at this portfolio. It's full of things. Dude, this uh, is a cool, cool grenade design. I never played the order. All right, so let's start at the, usually at the back end is like, so that one's six months old. This one is three months old. Seven months. Okay, so they're not necessarily in any particular order, which is okay. Thanks, Hoffman. How you doing? Here, I'll grab this one too. Just to, this is the other one for later. Okay, let's let's start down here. Western arc or arch arc. <laughs> it's too late, man. I can't. I don't know what's going on. I need more of this coffee. Anyways, poly count wise, this look looks pretty low. Uh, Roller coaster tycoon world. Thanks. So no, no, no concept. So resolution wise, this looks pretty good. I assume that it's kind of being uh, displayed in the roller coaster tycoon view. Although I don't know if world is like full on three D or if it's rendered out. I'm not sure. Bob, what's up, man? So the only things I would say about this asset, uh, like maybe the horns need to be the same color as the bone just to kind of, uh, as the skull, just so that it separates itself from the rest of the asset. Uh, and then the texel density on the side here seems a little bit lower than this area. And then with all of the brown, I mean, there's even brown in the bone, maybe taking this metal element and giving it a little bit more um, cold values to it. I think you'd be good. Whoa, eight months, dude. What the hell? Thanks, man. Getting close to that baby, as they like to say. Hussein, what's going on, man? Hussein Ranana, how you doing? As far as poly count goes, this looks pretty good. I think uh, mainly because it'd be pretty far away. Or be more of like a RPG or RPG, a uh, RTS style layout. I got the sniffles, man. I'm sorry. If I just look up, it'll go away, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, topology is pretty clean. And you see, like, when you add loops like this, it's really good that you're using that to break the silhouette up. Like, it's not just straight. It's quite often, actually, that you'll see, at least early on in people's work, uh, adding loops and, and details like that, but then, like, not actually taking advantage of the geometry that they're adding. I mean, it's got these. Maybe if these are exaggerated a little bit more, that could be kind of cool. And with how harsh the transition is of this piece of uh, log sticking into it, you actually don't even have to model into it. Like, it could just be pushed into it like a separate mesh. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have sniffles like the rest of the stream. Um, 
so I mean that looks that looks pretty cool. Let's see these guys. This looks this is pretty solid too. I like the attention to uh the difference between a side and um the actual grain. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I'd be careful about the AO being in the um in the albedo. But I guess I mean it depends what the engine is. Three years ago. Oh crazy. Okay. <laughs> My nose. <laughs> Back when you were in school. Alright. So this rock looks pretty good. This boulder. What type of game is this? Maybe I should look it up, huh? Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Not really. I'm just going to have boogers. That's all. Oh man, this game looks pretty cool. If anyone's curious, I'll drop this in uh chat there. Yeah, that that looks dope. Early access, huh? So visually it looks it looks fun. <laughs> Survival game on Mars. Cool. Anyway, so poly count wise, this is super, super low. Um you might have been able to get away with both of these being packed into one one UV set. Depending, I'm not sure of the scale of these. That's the other thing. So it might be worth displaying like some type of uh, character next to it, just to give you an idea. Yeah, visuals usually aren't the hardest part about a game. Making a game fun is difficult, right? Anyways, the the edge wear on there really like sells that. It's pretty cool. Substance Painter, of course. You're probably using some smart masks and and the like. Let's go through some other. So I'd say maybe the bevels on this are a little small, but looks looks pretty good. Drew Mueller, thanks for the follow, man. Hope you are having a good Thursday. Uh, the so in your normal here, you'll see there's some uh, some gradient stuff going on here. Be careful about that. I'm not sure. I guess that's happened. Well, I mean, I think you just need to um, force your normals on your your low poly before you do the bake. Because that shouldn't be like that based on what I'm seeing in the smoothing groups here. And assuming the UVs are what I'm seeing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is cool. So the only thing I'd say about this is this might be a good case where um, either another UV set to get some AO in here with like packed UVs for the whole thing or like if this is a zero to one, you're just packing the everything would be in a single UV set to begin with and then you can just bake some AO. That'll help you get a lot of separation inside here where like the inner core area is quite a bit darker naturally it'll just cause everything to separate out a bit more and then it looks like there's a little bit of extra geo on here that might not be needed so if this is like the scale of like a character is sitting here you should be able to probably afford more geometry, but I don't I don't know the limitations of the game you're working on as well, so this looks cool. Wow, this is really low poly. Like look how nice the, the normals are kinda getting the light to wrap around those those hard edges. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um 
This is uh, really well executed, though. This one looks pretty cool. I would say maybe some a little extra geometry where the um, the keyboard and stuff is would probably help. Nice texture job, though. This looks like Reed's stuff. <laughs> this is cool. Ply count looks uh, pretty pretty normal. That little that little bump there is is got some polys. Oh snap! So I I like that you're adding the real time viewer, but I really like that you're adding it at the end because usually people just will look at this and be like, all right, cool. And for the ones who scroll down and then see this, then they feel like they have the choice versus being forced. You know what I mean? So the amount of geometry, what is it? If I go. So that with the amount of geometry that you're adding here, uh, recognize that you can add that, that amount of geo to things like this area. You could have cut this in. Um, or, uh, made these pieces like stick out or s go in a little bit. It wouldn't have added that much geometry. Yeah, this is nice having the viewer at the end. Watch, we're going to go to the next one and the viewers at the beginning. <laughs> awesome, it's cool. I think exploring some of the materials a little bit more with like the wear and tear and kind of like, like you could probably extrude these in depending on how much you can, how much you can spare. Let's, let's take a look at this. Control W, what? Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? Why'd you do that, Reed? Why'd you do that? <laughs> Control Shift T is your best friend, man. Um. So these weld lines are pretty good. I think maybe if they were exaggerated a little bit more, just because you're you're trying to show them that that's hilarious. I hate you. <laughs> Was that Silo Riyami? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyways, this is uh this is pretty cool. I thought you were showing me some type of hotkey for some reason. This is how tired I am, you see? So with this uh, tube here, this like rope tube thing, it'd be interesting to play with like two different roughness values between like this darker one and then the orange orange band. Reed, you trickster. You get out of here, you trickster. Yeah, more geo in this would really be uh, lovely. Like this, I guess this is okay here, but like you could totally like add more to round this out. Same here and here. Cause like when you look at it, um, I wonder if there's a good way to, maybe this view is the best. So like in this view, you can kind of see the, the stepping, add enough geometry to, uh, negate that stepping and you'll, you'll be in a really good spot. Silo dude. Thanks for the follow, man. That's terrible. I want to know why Reed did that. Was it actually malicious or was he just saying it and then boom. It happened. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Oh, this is cool. I like that. 
So I think in that that little imprint, it would be nice because it looks like it's etched in. It'd be nice to have that as a different roughness value. <laughs> My nose. I'm sorry. I'm sniffling, guys. Oh, oh, Reed. Okay, so let's let's keep going here. What else we got going on? Nice. This probably, uh, if you have like a uh, blog, or if you're paying for Pro, you'll have a blog. Uh, this looks like something that'd be good for a blog blog post. Oh, this guy. Who's this guy? Nice potatoes. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Doesn't he know they're peeled potatoes? No, I just I'm kidding. What a what a what a friend. What a friend. He couldn't even be creative. <laughs> uh but yeah, I would definitely I would keep this in the blog unless you uh you feel like you've gotten it to a point where like it's either textured or like, you know. It's got all the details you're expecting. Dude, this song is way too repetitive. I can't, I can't even. Thumbs down. Ooh, this is a good one. Your friend roasting you. Best friends ever roast each other. Um, Onward. Ah, the classic. The classic high explosive grenade. Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to say what it's made out of, and it's just like talking about verts and triangles and polygons and stuff. <laughs> right at the end, it's like bracket stuff. <laughs> nice textures, uh, nice UVs, super nice UVs. Let's look at the uh, interaction with the lighting. Oh, what? Oh, that was weird. So the way, either the way the model is or the way the lighting goes across it, like you have like a little bit of a crease here, must be that poly count. So you can get away with that if you just increase that poly count. Like you're definitely like, um, so triangles, this is 1400. Uh, I think you could double that for something like this. Like, especially when, like, you're paying for that type of detail. Like, you're wanting that to look rounded, right? So there, there's no reason why this shouldn't look, this much larger piece shouldn't look as rounded. Dude, I remember when I was shy to add the geometries. There's some really old stuff of mine online somewhere. I think uh, someone on the Discord found a blog a while back, and I was like super low poly, working in Unreal 2.5. Oh my god. Um. Yes. Let us and tomatoes onward. Oh, this is interesting. So what? Uh, what I'm missing here immediately when I look at it is there's. It doesn't seem to be like any AO or like a contrast in the the shapes and how they're interacting with each other. If I copy this image, let's um, let's go in here. Oh, look, my vines. So obviously, you've got some pretty serious highlights going on there. So you're gonna be careful about that. But like, if you zoom in here. Oh, here's some more stepping. <laughs> if you zoom in here, you can see like the the difference. It just really helps like adding that depth, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot of us did grow up on uh, brutally low poly counts. Uh, 
I mean, relatively speaking, you still have to be pretty low. Um, but man, that's really gone away. Like, I think the last battlefield had like, I think they had 8 million polys on screen or tries. Uh, let's, let's keep, let's keep on keeping on. So yeah, just in general, this looks pretty good. I would say like, so in the, oh shit, in the, uh, in the concept, it's pretty boxy. And I think uh, you're you're nailing the boxiness, but I think that using the the edges and beveling them a little wider could really help like um, solidify it as a style versus like um, like blocky. Defcon, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh, man, you got some follow-up questions afterwards, too? All right, man. I like it. So you got some dripping stuff down here. That's really cool. I really, really like that. I think that um, where it's missing is, like, I expect some, a lot more dripping and stuff around this area. This asset is actually much closer to the poly counts that you would expect. Maybe you could make, well, those are wood pieces, and then these are rounder, so that's good. Man, you're working really optimal, though, I see. Like this little cap thing on the side here, you could probably, even though it's pretty shallow there, you could exaggerate that just because it'll look better in 3D. Like just taking that side and bringing it out just a little bit further. B-Man, what's up, man? B-Man, yo, man. Hey, man. You, man. Please care about poly counts. Love a programmer. If you want to love a programmer... Just make sure you're triangulating your stuff or that the engine is triangulating it. Oh man, Reed, I read F5 and was thinking about doing it and then didn't do it. But yes, think about your programmers. They're your friends. They're your allies. They're the ones who give you the weapons to do the job. This is pretty cool though. I think... Uh, maybe some some color variation in here or like interaction between like the the metal and the wood here could be pretty good but all the little details and stuff is really cool what four months ago huh this looks like a bit of a level up sir Oh man, that scale too. This is about the same height as the character. Yeah, poly count wise, I think I think you're pretty on uh I think you're pretty in line. I think you're pretty in line with the details that you're adding here. As far as the poly count goes, like nice rounded shapes here. Do you think the main render is too monochromatic? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. Let me look at the concept though. I mean, the concept doesn't even have really any color into it except the reds. Like I think if you made your reds pop a little bit more, it could probably help a bit. Let's, um, I mean, I don't, hmm, I think it's okay. Like if you, if you needed to, like there's this, this yellow here probably could be more, um, like a lighter yellow. So that it actually pops out like, um, some warning pattern. Uh, maybe along this bottom edge too, could be like some patterns. So it's like, Hey, don't trip on this. This generator render is pretty dark. Let's look at the uh, histogram. Wait, what? Okay, hang on. We're, we're getting some like weird. We'll do that. So just a little, this is random and you guys probably know this already, but like these areas here are really dark, right? So like, I think it's giving you the perceived uh, sense that it's really dark. Obviously these, these areas in here are pretty dark, but um, if you highlight an area and then do a control L, then you can actually see the histogram 
of like what you're what you're building and what you want to do. Can we do this? So you can see now there's some information in there. That would probably be enough. So if let's uh, let's do this. I'll just put this color behind it. Sorry to blinding you. Um, let's put that in front. Oh, my eyeballs. Oh man, this is probably killing you guys. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that compression. Mm. I'm just checking some stuff. That doesn't seem like you can do much. Why can't I? Why? Why? There we go. Your eyes are burning. That's what you get, Reed. For making me freaking close the tab. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's all that... Uh, hmm. I think if you bring this in... And then maybe like, we can do something like this and then screen it and then give it a mask, invert the mask. Oops. And then just kind of paint in some of the, It's totally cheating, isn't it? No. Nah. It's all presentation, man. So that's what we're looking at. Just kind of lower this down. Boom. All done. How cruel. This would be better if you just blur everything out. If you like, just lose your vision. <laughs> uh, this is pretty. It's a pretty nice asset, though. I think um, you've modeled it quite well. Let's see. This is nice, too. I think that you can actually possibly get away with making this a GIF, depending on the, the quality of it, right? The other thing you can know is if you right click, you can loop these. Mm. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, these reds just need to, reds and the yellows, just get them to pop out a bit more. And you're good to go. So let's, uh,. All right, and then the grenade. So this grenade's pretty cool. I think um, these could actually, let's see what, what's going on here. So those are concepts. Oh, okay, no, they don't really stick out all that much. Yeah, the gift quality can vary. So this also needs like, um, like obviously you, you must have like, oh, I can't really see, can I? Um, you must have a unique bake for one of these and then you're using them twice. In the other UV set, if you could do like um, like pack them both together, another UV set, and then bake an AO, you'll get the interaction you'll get on this. I just tried to rotate that. The interaction you'll get <laughs> get on this asset and the plate is going to look so much more like like locked in and kind of interacting with each other. It probably looks good in the Marmoset viewer without it being like real time. Uh, well, the three the browser viewer. But uh, this looks pretty nice. Again, you could probably do with rounding this out a little bit more. Let me, let me look at the... Yeah, you could add like an extra cut between each one of these. Especially since down here you're doing quite a bit. In general, this is pretty cool though. Dang, dude. Dang, dude. Yeah, you really think about that stuff, though, which is nice. It's good to see. I'm not sure, Rick. I'm not sure. Oh, man, Defcon. Dude. Why'd you do that, bro? <laughs> Thanks, dude. 
Okay. So your questions, I think you had some and they were further up. Let me see if they are here. Uh, I have two general questions to ask you. One, how do you think I could push my portfolio to the next level? Like more of an intermediate senior portfolio. Would you have advice on how to approach bigger projects? I have trouble. Dunder did. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the follow. Dude or do that. Um, so bigger projects, lots of planning and reference gathering and then it, execution and when i say execution make sure you block everything out that'll make it way more approachable um ma what's up i'm here boss dave how you doing what were the other questions and then uh pushing your portfolio to uh intermediate slash senior so intermediate slash senior is more along the lines of like, so you have these right now I'm seeing a lot of props. Um, if you, it depends what you want to be. If you're a 3d artist, then this is fine. And you just need to add more. And then, uh, in your about section, I just expect to see like intermediate. Yeah. You should be approaching intermediate. I think showing more scenes constructed together. You're a VFX artist too, huh? Nice. Yeah, kind of putting putting scenes together if you're an environment artist or putting props together if you're a props artist. I still suggest building some scenes uh, as it shows your understanding of interactions between multiple uh, props and their scale to each other, as well as being able to tell stories. Um, it's just a, a better way to be able to express your creativity and show that you're a creative person and that you're really you're in it to win it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then compositions. Uh, scenes force you to show your lighting. They force you to show comp composition, scale understanding, presentation, all that jazz. But I mean, I can see what's really cool is I can see the progression of your quality going up. So that's really nice. And as far as getting into the senior role, I think uh, just being more present in the industry itself. So like continue posting work, continue shipping games. That's senior. But yeah, this looks great. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next portfolio. If you have any other questions, uh, just let me know. You can message me on the discord and I'll just, we can, uh, we can figure it out. How go our king? Our king go good. He ate a bunch of food. He went outside, went to the bathroom. For anyone who's wondering, the king is our uh, our emperor. He's a little dog, a doggo. All right, we're going to switch over. 